Hey everybody, welcome to Quick Tip Thursday. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today's topic is understanding in Intellicolor in the new photo effects lab. So let me tell you just a little bit about Intellicolor. Intellicolor was released in Photo Effects Lab version 1.1. It was something that our development team worked on pretty extensively and is basically an intelligent color type of technique. It allows you to change your color and contrast and saturation yet still maintain a very natural color. And it really is evident when you're working with your contrast, your exposure, your dynamic slider within Photo Effects Lab. And you can compare that to other programs, contrast sliders, which are pretty evident that they do increase that saturation level. So basically, the idea is that IntelliColor allows for you to maintain a very natural and well-balanced color throughout your post-processing, which is always good. What we're going to be doing today is just taking a look at the sliders that actually use the IntelliColor technology and comparing them to other programs. And this isn't specific to those other programs, it's just I know a lot of you would want to see that comparison in action. So the first comparison we're going to be talking about is contrast and we'll be using the contrast, the dynamics, the different specialized contrast sliders within Photo Effects Lab versus the contrast slider in Lightroom. So I have Lightroom here over on the left and I have Photo Effects Lab over on the right. Again, with the contrast slider, the issue is usually, or contrast adjustments, the issue is usually your saturation is very obviously affected when you take that contrast up. So let me go ahead and take the contrast over here in Lightroom up just a bit. And it's, that's a pretty heavy adjustment, but you can see as I go up pretty heavily, here's back down to about the normal, it starts to really add saturation to the yellow within the wheat field, within the skin, and it starts to lose that natural type of color. So with a really heavy contrast adjustment, it might not be really effective for this type of image. Well, over here in Photo Effects Lab, if I just use my contrast slider as well, you'll notice it maintains that RGB ratio that was in that first image and just affects the contrast. So this is the contrast slider within Photo Effects Lab over here on the right. And you can push this up very, very high and it's not going to affect that saturation level. So again, this is maintaining an RGB ratio, the natural color that was in the image beforehand. This is also really evident in the other contrast sliders within Photo Effects Lab, the dynamic slider, which is actually a localized contrast slider. You can push this up very high as well and you're not going to see that shift in saturation. It's going to try to maintain the best ratio as possible as you make these adjustments. Now we also have highlight shadows, whites, and blacks, which are more contrast sliders. You see you can get really great adjustments here and you can tell each one of these maintains that ratio as well. So that is the first area where you really start to see how the IntelliColor technology works. The exposure here also does not change the RGB ratio, which you'll find does in many programs. So let's go ahead and take a look at saturation. For this, I'm going to go ahead and hop on into Photoshop. It's Photoshop CS5. And I'm just going to use this image over here. Let me grab the same image within Photo Effects Lab. Okay, same image here. And we're just going to add an adjustment layer saturation. So we're going to push this pretty high, but still something that might be applicable in everyday post-processing. Again, this is a bit high, but it's really easier to tell when it's a little bit pushed exactly what's going on, especially during the session here today. So from, I'm going to go ahead and take the saturation level to about the same. It's not going to be the same value because it is a different program, but it's about the same right there. So about the same saturation level. And then if we go ahead and let me over here on Photoshop, just scroll in here to 100% so we can really see what's going on. As you scroll in, you can see that it handles this level of saturation really well within details and it's not doing 
too many artifacts until you start to go up into the areas that are more flat and have natural gradients like the sky and, and the water here. So over here on the right in Photo Effects Lab, I'm going to scroll into the same area, get to 100%. Here we are. And you can start to see that it is much more smooth over here on the right, especially if you start to look right on the horizon line of the water. Now, because it is push, you are seeing some issues over here too, but the idea is that in these smoother areas, these smoother gradients, you're not going to see as many artifacts. And you're not going to see as many artifacts in the shadow areas when you really push your saturation. So I'm just going to scroll around to a couple trouble areas over here on this top right corner can tell over on Photo Effects Lab, it's much more smooth, so it's just blending into each other much nicer than it is over here on the right. And you can really start to see over here on the left-hand corner, all of the different artifacts that are really quite evident over here at Photoshop are just a little bit more smooth over here in Photo Effects Lab. And that is how IntelliColor technology is placed within the saturation adjustments within Photo Effects Lab. Again, it's just trying to maintain a more natural type of color, and it's going to just handle these really more highly saturated levels better than, than some other programs. So let me take this up even further, because I have people saying they're really not seeing it. So again, this is something where, okay, so this is really obvious. <laughs> like, this is going a little bit obviously much more further, but I think this will give you an idea of how this might work. Let's see here. So this is about the same level. You can see now that the photo on the right is just a little bit more smooth. It's not getting as many artifacts, and the artifacts that are there are blending much more nicely than over here on the left. And you can see in the shadowy areas, you're starting to get a little bit more artifacts that aren't necessarily happening over on the right. So that is kind of the difference I'm trying to show you. Again, this is pushing it to its limit at this point. So. I am going to go ahead and turn the questions over to you, but I want to just end it with that is what IntelliColor technology really allows for in Photo Effects Lab is when you're going through all of these different adjustment sliders, you're really able to maintain the original type of RGB ratio that you had in the beginning when you're going through all these exposure and contrast adjustments. And then when you want to actually come in and change your saturation, which wasn't changed when you were going with your contrast, you you can then do so and push it quite high without having to worry about any artifacting or, and if you do push it really high, that it's going to be a lot smoother than it would be in certain other programs. So that is the idea of it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you guys. Greg says, can we use this in conjunction with the masking tool? Of course. So in this particular image, because the sky does have quite a bit of noise and in that gradient, that really smooth gradient by itself, this might be a situation where if I was actually working on this as, let me go back to fit here, as I push this saturation level up and I started to get this extra noise and stuff like this, this would definitely be something where I would use in conjunction with my masking tools and maybe mask out, um, let me duplicate that layer and reset all to my bottom one and get back up to my top layer, use my masking tools to brush out the sky so I can get my original sky, which was much more smooth and more natural feeling. Take that brush size really far up. You're able to just come in real quick. Here's before. Here's after. My sky now is the same where all my grass, even up there on that horizon line, is much more saturated, much more colorful coming through. Uh, Fred says, do you suggest uh, using the IntelliColor adjustments in Photo Effects Lab other than the plugins? I think as far as saturation goes, if you're going to really push it, then this would be probably a better area to really get high levels of saturation without having to worry about too much extra artifacting in the shadows 
and areas where you'll find that maybe even the Topaz plugins struggle a little bit because this is a new technology. It's not within the color adjustments within, let's say, Adjust. However, there's also something called adaptive saturation and a saturation boost within certain plugins that are going to have different types of technology as well. However, if it is just a saturation adjustment and you're really wanting to add a lot of color, I would say try it here first because you'll find that you don't get as much noise and artifacting within the shadow areas, which is really important. Um, let's hear it. This is a great question from Sydney. It says, if you do an Instatone to an image, will the saturation still work properly with the adjustment sliders, including the saturation slider? Does it pick up the underlying RGB info from the Instatone image? Sydney, that's a great question, and my suggestion on that workflow would be to go and do your Instatone first, because when your Instatone is actually applied to your image, so let's, let's get, reset this mask and get to these adjustments and reset that adjustments, and I'll go into Fit and just do a quick Instatone just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Whenever you choose something that you like and that is kind of a okay so this is going to be really strong everybody but this is uh, just an idea of what you could do so I'm going to say apply to my layer and I get this really strong tone back so I'm just going to use my opacity whatever is brought back into this layer Sydney is actually burned into this layer so it changes your image thumbnail so then you have a new RGB ratio that is this particular image now. So this RGB ratio that you had on this layer is not going to be the same that you have on this layer. So if you, let's say, change your opacity, maybe change the blending mode to a little soft light. And then did a stack layer. That's usually my workflow with Instatone. Now I have this layer that has a different RGB than uh, the layer below. So then now I can work with this and the saturation is going to apply directly to whatever RGB ratio I'm looking at right now on this particular layer. So that's the workflow I would suggest for that particular using Instatone with the adjustments here. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming to Quick Tip Thursday. Have a great afternoon or morning or evening wherever you're joining us from and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.